Hi students, Professor Nugent here. In this video, we're going to discuss the inconsistency of OLS. If the error term is correlated with any of the independent variables, then OLS is going to be biased and inconsistent. And we know that the bias persists even as the sample grows. So here's how we define inconsistency. And this definition of inconsistency, this comes from the derivation of the consistency of OLS from the previous video. So the definition of inconsistency is the probability limit of beta 1 hat minus the true value of beta 1, which is equal to the covariance between x1 and u divided by the variance of x1. And the inconsistency is going to be positive if the covariance between x1 and u is positive, and vice versa. So you're going to have consistency it, inconsistency, you have inconsistency if the covariance is not equal to zero. All right. So if the covariance is, if this thing is small relative to the variance, this inconsistency might be negligible. But the thing is, uh, it's not really possible to know because u is unobserved. Let's spend a little bit more time thinking about this. If we consider the a, a two variable population model, y i is equal to beta naught plus beta one x one i plus beta two x two i plus u i. Okay, so assume that this is the population model. Both of these variables enter the population regression function, and these two coefficients are non-zero. Beta 1, beta 2 are non-zero. Assume that this model satisfies the first four Gauss-Markov assumptions so that V has a zero mean and is uncorrelated with x1 and x2. So the estimators are unbiased. Then assume you leave out x2 for who knows why maybe you wake up on the wrong side of the bed you left out x2 from the regression that you estimate when the population model is given by this equation here so what's going to happen well the error u well let's say the error v we have a u up there. The error v is going to be given by u, that error, plus beta 2 x2, right? Because now the beta 2 x2 is in the error. And the plim of beta 1 tilde is equal to beta 1 plus beta 2 delta 1. And this should look familiar because we have derived this before, where delta 1 is equal to the covariance between x1 and x2 all over the variance of x1. So for practical purposes, we can view this definition of inconsistency as the population counterpart to the sample statistic of bias, okay? Because this is how we have described bias. And what we're saying is that when the sample grows really large, you still have this characteristic about OLS. And, and what we're saying is that at this point, we're, this is the inconsistency of OLS. Um, and so in order for this to come about, you need both the covariance between x1 and x2 to be positive, and you need a positive beta 2. So x2 has to enter the regression function. 
You can obtain the sign of this bias the same way as you would obtain the sign of the sign of this inconsistency, excuse me, the sign of this inconsistency the same way that you would obtain the sign of the bias as we discussed previously. Please also note that if one coefficient is inconsistently estimated, that all other coefficients are going to be inconsistently estimated unless the coefficient that is inconsistently estimated is completely, perfectly, totally uncorrelated with the other included explanatory variables. If that is not the case, then the other included explanatory variables will have coefficients that are inconsistent as well due to the correlation amongst the variables. That's it for inconsistency. Please stay tuned for a discussion of asymptotic normality and large sample inference.